1984, Afini Shakur, a poor single mother of two kids, Tupac and Setua, was struggling moving from shelter to shelter living in New York City. Eager for a fresh start with the new opportunities, Afini found the chance to provide a better life and stability for her kids moving to Baltimore, Maryland. She found an affordable place in a brick house apartment in North Baltimore, located in the small neighborhood of Penn Lucy. If you wanted to know the story of Tupac's teenage years in Baltimore, then this is the video. Tupac, a New York kid with a Harlem swag, was unfamiliar with his new neighborhood and surroundings, quoting his first impressions of Baltimore as an ignorance town, due to it having the highest percentage of black-on-black -black crime and murders. While adjusting to his new town, Tupac attended Roland Park Middle School to finish the eighth grade. At that time in the neighborhood, as well as at school, Tupac felt like an outcast, being picked on for his name, having no friends, wearing hand-me-downs so bad that his clothes would be two sizes too big that he would have to staple his pants together in order for them to fit and wear to school. At home, he slept in a small bedroom while his mother and sister slept in the living room, converted into a bedroom with a mattress in the middle. Tupac realized that having no father figure, no money, sometimes no running water or electricity, he had to become the man of the house and find a way to make it out for his family. But what he always had, no matter how bad things were, was his love of music and the arts. He would often write poetry, listen to wide ranges of music from Prince, rap group, run DMC, rap artists like Curtis Blow. Also, most of all, he spent his time reading books from people like Patrice Lumumba and Stokely Carmichael to Seize the Time by Bobby Seale and Soul Dad Brother by George Jackson. Even when they didn't have electricity, Tupac would go out in the front of his house near a street light in order to read one of his favorite books, The Autobiography of Malcolm X. He would always be humming a new rhyme or writing some new notes of poetry down every second he could. One day, heading home after school, the bus was nearly packed to capacity with only a few seats open. Tupac, drawn to one of the only friendly faces he saw at the time, sat next to Dana Smith, nicknamed Mouse Man, who was eager to get home himself to watch his favorite hip-hop show, Webb's Rap Attack, which aired at 4 o'clock. Mouse Man, who was popular in school with a talent in beatboxing, asked Tupac if he was into hip-hop and if he knew how to rap. Tupac then kicked the flow to him that was so dope, Mouse Man was immediately impressed. Funny thing is, Mouse Man didn't know that the rap Tupac spit was actually from Curtis Blow, a song that wasn't mainstream and only popular in New York. And fittingly, hailing from New York himself, Tupac chose the rap name MC New York. The two bonded over their love for hip-hop and forged a close friendship from then on. Hanging out every day after school, mainly writing rhymes and performing their raps to each other, occasionally they would go to the local record store where Tupac would show Mouse Man his other ranges of music genres he enjoyed, artists like Kate Bush with Rethering Heights, to even Steve Winwood who was most known for his hit songs Higher Love and Back in the High Life Again. They would often hang out at the local rec center, Tupac uninterested in sports, partly due to not being good at playing any sports like basketball with the other kids would instead just hang out with Mouse Man and other friends in the neighborhood writing rhymes and listening to music all day. Their friendship didn't come without its own problems. Though Mouse Man was popular and known as one of the coolest freshest dressed kids in school, he would get teased for hanging with Tupac, who the other kids would tease calling him corny and raggedy. Mouse didn't let the hate from the other kids get in the way of their friendship. Often, they would stick up for each other against the kids who were trying to pick on Tupac. And Tupac, no pushover himself, was willing to confront anyone hating on him. Now, both graduated middle school, attending their freshman year at Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School. The two friends decided to take their rap skills to the next level, starting their own group called the Eastside Crew. Tupac's first rap songs was about gun control, inspired by the fatal shooting of a kid in the neighborhood, as he was known by his friends to have a deep passion to bring an awareness to the conditions and senseless murders in his communities. When he found out the mother couldn't afford to bury her son, Tupac helped to organize a benefit to raise the funds for the funeral. 
One day, Tupac found a flyer headline calling all rappers, urging any local rappers under the age of 18 to write the best rap about the Pratt Library and be eligible for a cash prize. All entrants had to submit a written copy of their rhyme in advance with no profanity allowed. After the best raps were selected, the finalists would perform at the library in front of judges who would then pick a winner. Tupac, or MC New York, immediately felt this was his chance to shine. Though he was into his rap music and theater, he was also just as much known for his awareness of the poor conditions in America that the black community was in. Having a mother who was a Black Panther, also a civil rights activist, Tupac was more aware of the plights and struggles black people face much more than his peers. He would often preach to his friends about black history or how to better the community, but it would often fall on deaf ears being that most kids didn't want to listen to those kinds of things. Understandingly, he would much rather focus on having fun in school, but Tupac carried that knowledge of self-destruction his community was facing and he would not give up trying to find a way for them to listen, but in a more cool way. As an example, for the rap contest at the Enoch Pratt Free Library, the East Side crew submitted a rap called Library Rap. By no surprise to them, the rap was selected. The East Side crew was picked to perform for the cash prize, but more importantly, get recognized for the rap skills. Unfortunately, they didn't have transportation to make it to the performance. Now me, Deborah Taylor. At the time, she was the Young Adult Services Coordinator for the Pratt Library, also was the one who organized the contest to add some positive influence for the community. Deborah found out the boys selected to perform couldn't attend the final event due to not having a ride, so then she stepped up volunteering to personally drive them herself, and that's what she did. Coding in an interview, they were polite boys, they were nice kids. Now at the event, when it was the Eastside Crew's turn to perform their song Library Rap, now in front of a judge panel of local radio personalities in a packed crowd, before they started, MC New York said in the mic, Yo Enoch Pratt, bust this. Then they started performing their song with lyrics, encouraging the youth to get their library cards, telling the kids to stay in school, learn to read, and to get all the credits you need to graduate. During the performance, the judges were drawn to Tupac, quoting, the scrawny kid lit up the room with his rapping, that when he started performing, one judge stated, it wasn't the best rhymes, but when Tupac performed, he exploded. You couldn't take your eyes off of him. By no one's surprise in attendance, Tupac and the Eastside crew won a cash prize of $100. Following the performance, the group gained some local success. To capitalize off their new attention, they made more songs to perform at local events. Driven by Tupac's influence, the group focused on positive raps for the community with songs titled Babies Having Babies and Genocide Rap. Focus on the political and social awareness Tupac inherited from his mother. Now taking their rap skills seriously, they would perform for anyone that was willing to listen. From neighborhood block parties to the drug dealers working on Old York Road to even opening for local acts like rap group Matronics at the Cherry Hill Rec Center. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe for part two of Tupac's life in Baltimore. You can also check out some of our other videos as well.